Hello and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to build an amazing Spotify app using Python. And as you can see, this is our sign up page for the app, which include three buttons that users can sign up with. Then here we have the Python code for the app podcast page, which I'm going to run the code for you to see. And finally, we have the artist page here. And when I run the code, then we get the UI page for various artists that we can choose from. And this asset folder here contains all the images and other files required to run the application. So now, the first thing we need is to get the design of our application ready. I'm using the Figma software to produce this design. Figma is an online tool that helps people to design apps and websites. So click on get started here to create an account. You can also download the desktop app version by clicking on products and then selecting downloads. Then you will find the desktop versions for Mac and Windows operating systems. So when you are done setting up Figma, I have dropped the link to the Spotify app design in the video description. Go to the repository and then click on the Spotify app.fig. Then click on this little icon here to download the file. And when it's done downloading, Go to your Figma homepage and then import the Figma file you just downloaded. So the next thing we will do is to convert the Spotify app design into Python code. And to do that, we're going to need a Python tool called Tkinter Designer. So Tkinter Designer is a tool that analyzes our Figma app design and then converts it into real Python code. And this eliminates the need for developers encoding GUI applications manually while ensuring accuracy in converting the design into functional GUI applications. I will drop the link to the Tkinter Designer tool in the video description. And the next thing we're going to do is to click on code and then download the whole repository on our local computer. And when it's done downloading, locate the zip file and extract the files to your local computer. And here is the whole code which was downloaded from the repository. Now, what we're going to do is to open our favorite code editor. I'm actually going to go with VS Code and then click on open folder and navigate to the repository we just downloaded. Once it's located, click on open. Inside the files folder, you will find a file named requirement.txt. Open this file to view the packages or dependencies necessary for Tkinter Designer to run smoothly. These packages are essential for the proper functioning of Tkinter Designer. So let's proceed to install these packages. In the VS Code terminal, ensure that you are in the same directory as the requirement.txt file, which is the Tkinter Designer folder. It's also important to note that Python must be installed on your machine. Next, type in the following command. If you are using a Windows computer, use the pip command. However, if you are on a Mac computer, you will need to use pip3 instead of pip and then type in install-r requirement.txt. This command will install the necessary dependencies listed in the requirement.txt file. Then press enter to execute the command. Now let's wait for the packages to finish downloading. Once the installation is complete, we will proceed to run our Tkinter Designer software. Navigate to the GUI directory and locate the GUI.py file under the asset folder. Open this file and then finally click on the run button to launch the app. Now here is our Tkinter Designer software. However, one thing to note if you are making your own custom designs in the future, make sure your app design is inside a Figma frame. As you can see, all these three pages of our app here are inside a Figma frame. And inside these frames, make sure you name all your components according to the documentation provided on the Tkinter Designer. I will include the link to this documentation in the video description below for reference. So if our Tkinter application consists of this component, this is how we will name them in Figma, which is very important. Because as mentioned here, the code generated by Tkinter Designer is based on the names of elements from your Figma design. And as such, you need to name your element accordingly. So back to our design, let's address an important consideration regarding our buttons here. 
Ticking tie designer tends to add white rectangles at the edge of our buttons when converting the design into Python code. So to resolve this, we will draw an extra rectangle in the background of our buttons and ensure that the background for our buttons matches the main background of the app design. Once we've adjusted the background, we will then group the button and the background rectangle together and name them as buttons. And this ensures that Ticking Tide Designer recognizes the grouped element as buttons and generate the code accordingly without adding unnecessary white rectangles at the edge. So now, let's start generating the code for our Spotify application. So we need to get three things in order for Ticking Tide Designer to generate our Python code. The first thing we need is to get the token. And to do that, I'm gonna head back to Figma, then navigate to the homepage and select your profile. From there, click on settings, scroll down to personal access tokens, and then generate a new token. I will name this token as Spotify, and then click on generate token. Now, I'll copy this token, close this window, and then return to Tick and Tie Designer. Here, I will paste the token ID I just copied. Again, we need the file URL which is our Spotify app design in Figma. So back to Figma inside our UI design, I'm going to click on the share button here, then copy the link here for the file URL. Then back to Tick Inter Designer, I'm going to paste the link here to the file. Finally, we need to specify the output path where Tick Inter Designer will save the code for our application. So I'm going to click on this little icon. Then I will select the desktop folder as my output path and then click on choose. Lastly, we're going to click on the generate button here. Now we're going to wait for the code to be generated and saved on our computer desktop. And once the process is complete, click on OK. Now back to our desktop folder, you will find a new created folder named build. And inside this folder, you will find three GUI files. Each of these files is representing different pages of our Spotify app. And here you will find the asset folder which contains all the images and necessary files required to run the application. So I'm going to open this build folder inside my code editor. And when I run the first GUI.py file, then we get back the sign up page for our Spotify app. I'm going to close this page and then run the second Python file which is actually the page for podcast. Finally, when I close and run the last Python file, then we get the page for the artist, which is awesome, right? So stay tuned on the channel because in my upcoming tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can convert your Python code into real installable softwares. This means you can easily share your amazing apps with your friends or install them on other computers, even if they don't have Python installed on those machines. See you next time and as always, take care.